family and universal values. These are venues of sponsorship. And that's why we appeal, and we don't actually do it all the time, TV show like ours here. Why do we do this? People are asking me, why do you do this? I do it because I believe that we have to give the right understanding of Islam. Until and unless we do such thing, how can we expect people to understand what we stand for? If we want uh, to build good relationship with our neighbors and friends, to have a healthy society of understanding and respect, we need to come to people, to their homes in television, in the internet, uh, and, and of course in the magazine. All the media that we can use, we use them to educate and reach people because it is something very important. Dear viewers, this is a, a, a very important topic, but sponsorship, be a sponsor of anything, especially in the month of Ramadan where the rewards are great. The rewards are, are, are amazing in the months and the times of good uh, work and the rewards. So seize the opportunity and don't leave. We'll be back after these messages. Welcome back. It's been more than two years now that we've been airing uh, the Fate of Life TV show. But Fate of Life is not only a TV show, it's a Fate of Life network. Uh, it's a network of many professional people, many dedicated brothers and sisters who are uh, committed to show uh, Islam in its pristine, uh, original form as much as we can. We do different things, uh, including writing, uh, internet, blogs, and also uh, documentaries, TV documentaries and shows, and a lot of outreach programs. This takes a lot of energy, a lot of volunteer hours, and uh, I'm very delighted to be joined with one of our best volunteers, Sister Sanya Khan. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome, salam. Sister Sanya, you partook in many, many programs. And uh, before I, we discuss a few things about Faith of Life and what we're doing, uh, especially in this beautiful occasion and this time where Muslims are reflecting and thinking, and also thinking which work they should support. And they know that the image of Islam is, is of course, is, is one of the priorities, and to give the right correct information about Islam in these days. So uh, let me ask you uh, to introduce a little bit yourself. You're uh, this one uh, very successful young professional, uh, and I know you're only 22 years old, yet you're a CEO of your own company. You're a success story. Oh, thank you. Yeah, pretty much my uh, company is a halal food company. I actually studied fashion marketing, so it's a little bit opposite of what I studied, but it's kind of good because I've got into different kind of industries but still I know what the main cause is. My food, in, my food company is called Companions Choice. I basically wholesale private food labels to grocery stores and prior to this I was in the fashion industry. We've put on fashion shows, we've part of, been part of big fashion shows all over Toronto and um, that's basically what I'm doing and now I am part of the faith of life also while I'm doing the company so. That's great and you put a lot of hours and I uh and I know you were very good with the fashion. I mean, from fashion to halal food. Uh, why this change? Is there any any well, reason? Well, there's not really any specific reason. I used to do fashion, the fashion industry, uh, but I see that halal, the halal food industry was something that was in need, and I think that it's important for Muslims or anyone to just be able to be independent and have their own business and be you know, be in something successful, and especially Muslims, we, we eat halal food, and it's something that when I go to grocery stores, I have to read all the labels and see what's halal and not. So I wanted to make something for us, instead of us waiting for someone else to give us something. You know, I wanted to give back to, to our people and have something where we don't have to read the labels, we can do that. So the clothing that, industry is already pretty, you know, but saturated, that, so. That clearly shows your uh, entre entrepreneurial skills and leadership skills, which I noticed in your presentations, when you speak, when you make workshops for Faith of Life Network. Uh, why did you join Faith of Life Network, just to share with our viewers? Yeah, Faith of Life Network, I've actually did a lot of social work for different groups. And when I found Faith of Life Network, I thought it was something that 
I really wanted to be part of. Well, other volunteer work, it was more like you volunteer and then you go home at night and that was it. Faith of Life Network, it kind of encourages people to be independent and helps people with that. It helps the image of Islam, which is very important. It gets people out in the community. Um, it lets you go into different uh, organizations and you know talk about faith of life. And we have interfaith dinners, we have DVDs. It, it really helps the volunteers get involved in faith of life and uh, what the cause is. So. Yeah, now one of the things you definitely know that uh, just an update to our viewers. We'd, we've been doing a lot of documentaries over summer and last spring, and of course we filmed, which of course you you, you put a lot of effort and energy. We filmed the, the uh, Islam for Common Sense, yeah. which will be released very soon. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about the documentary that we did? Yeah, Islam for Common Sense, it was pretty much uh, an audience of people, and they asked questions that maybe the it's not basic questions that everyone might already know or is easy to access those questions it's questions that people really want to know about maybe the image of islam or something that maybe are misconceptions of islam or anything and we want to know the truth and that's what faith of life is to tell people the real answers and not what you know maybe the media says about us or or any questions about islam and that's basically what islam for common sense was it's something you know islam doesn't contradict common sense and that's basically what the documentary was showcasing you're a young girl born and bred in canada and you're Muslim. You have a lot of non-Muslim friends, I understand. Yeah. You're very integrated. Yes, you have no problem keeping your identity. You know, you have always this issue, oh, uh, if I mix with non-Muslims, if I mix with other youths, you know, could you help other youths who are uh, watching us? How can you balance between keeping the good friendship with people from different faiths, yet to be strong Muslim? And I see you as a strong Muslim girl. Definitely. I think the problem is that people think that you're either very, you know, too much into religion and then you don't make friends with, you know, you don't do anything in the community and then or you're just in the community and you don't practice your religion. And I think that's the problem. I think it has to be a balance. I can still practice my religion and I have non-Muslim friends. I still, you know, go out to restaurants with them. We still, you know, do our regular things. I, I work in, the, in, in an industry. I used to work in the fashion industry, but I still would practice my religion. It's not something. And I think that's what makes true leaders. I can still hang around with people, but I don't have to follow what they're doing because maybe that's something that they do. It doesn't mean that you have to kind of isolate yourself from the world, especially when you're working places, you know, your coworkers might be drinking or they might go out to parties. You know, you can still talk to them, but it doesn't mean that you have to follow in their footsteps or socially drink and whatnot. So I think that is a good balance and I still have all those friends. They still respect me. Some, so. A lot of youth actually are told by their parents not to befriend bad influence. Yeah. Uh, uh, of course, they may have some reasons, but is there? We we can go to the extremes. What's the balance? Where do you hit the balance? Yeah, it's true. You know, you wouldn't really want friends who are bad influences. I mean, I did have friends who are bad influences, but that's you know, Islamically and not Islamically. You know, you can still talk to them. It doesn't mean you'll completely isolate yourself. You can still be friends. It doesn't mean that you have to hang around with them all the time. You should always keep positive people in your in your circle and that's the balance I think that you can still talk to them it doesn't mean you co completely isolate yourself and you can still talk to them as long as you know that you have to have that mentality like you're the leader you don't have to if they're drinking I have to drink too or if they tell you to drink you have to drink you know you sh you should still be able to talk to people and not get influenced by them. You know Sonia, not